Okay, what we're looking at right now is going to be uh, colon polyps. First, let's discuss the different types of polyps, and then we'll talk about um, familial syndrome. So the first type of polyps can, is going to be adenomatous, and these can be um, with a stalk or without a stalk. Uh, what you want to know is the villus uh, has a worse prognosis. So um, this could be most more likely to be cancer. So the, what you want to think of is villus, think of it as villain. So it's more uh, villainous. And also, of course, um, the size, the larger it is, the more likely it is to be cancerous, and then also dysplasia. Um, common symptoms that you'll get with uh, polyps in any of these is going to be um, uh, rectal bleeding. So any bleeding that's coming from the rectum, uh, you can get, you know, sometimes you can get obstruction because, you know, they're protruding into the luminal wall, and you can also get uh, di a secretory diarrhea. And that's going to be pretty much true for all of them. A small variant is going to be the juvenile polyps. Um, in the juvenile polyps, it's going to be primarily um, just it, it's just a malformation of the mucosa. So, and it usually happens um, in children who are less than five years old. Um, and what you also tend to see, of course, is rectal bleeding, but it also can protrude actually from the rectum. Um, and there is a syndrome associated with this, uh, ju juvenile, juvenile polypo uh, polyposis syndrome. And uh, in this one, you just basically you just have uh, multiple juvenile polyps. Uh, everywhere and uh, and then it, 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 interestingly enough, it's also associated with uh, pulmonary uh, arteriovenous fistulas as well. Uh, finally, with the polyps, uh, we do have like a hyperplastic polyps. Um, these are very common in um, the elderly, so kind of like in the uh, 70 to 80 year old range. Um, and it's just basically a little bit of epithelial dysplasia, and these are benign as well. So now that we've kind of uh, discussed that, now we can uh, we'll, t we'll take a look at some of the familial syndromes. Um, that are associated with uh, formation of polyps. The first one we can look at is uh, Pleth Jaggers. And uh, interestingly enough, all of these are uh, autosomal dominance. So Pleth Jaggers is going to be um, autosomal dominance. Uh, you get multiple uh, hemartomosis. Uh, polyps. Um, you also, you tend to get uh, a mucocutaneous pigment on the face. So this is a big giveaway. Um, so anytime someone has like polyps and plus uh, anything on the face, it's going to be uh, plus checkers. Um, this complications that can arise from this uh, is going to be, you can get intussusception, which is oftentimes fatal. Um, as well as uh, you, you know, some malignancies are associated with this, and this is uh, even outside of the colon. Uh, it could be you know breast, ovarian, you know, er, er, you know anything. It just associated with increased risk of uh, malignancies. Uh, path, uh, pathogenesis. It is linked with uh, you know the LKB1 and the STK11 gene, which uh, causes it to uh, decrease uh, regulation of growth. Um, so that's going to be the quest jaggers. The next one we can look at uh, is going to be familial adenomatous polyposis. Um, in this syndrome, uh, you have a mutation in uh, the APC gene, which is on chromosome 5Q. Um, what ends up happening is they just get multiple polyps all throughout their body. 
uh, uh, sorry, all throughout their colon. So uh, what, you, what you generally want to do is you want to treat with prophylactic uh, colectomy usually after high school. There are some variants of it. Uh, one is going to be the Gardner and the other one is going to be the Turcot. Uh, in the Gardner, this is also associated with osteomas, uh, retinal hyperpigmentation, or actually retinal pigment hypertrophy. Uh, retinal pigment hypertrophy and um, also with uh, increased teeth in the mouth. Turcot is associated with CNS tumors, uh, primarily uh, medulloblastoma and glioblastoma. And, the good, and a good way to remember Turcot is brain cancer is when you see Turcot, think of turbin and you wear turban on your head. So that's a really easy way to remember it. So, um, that's going to be FAP, and finally we're going to have uh, hereditary non polypulpous uh, coli. Um, this is also going to be autosomal dominance. Uh, this is going to be a problem in the uh, mismatch repair gene. So basically the um, body cannot fix mismatch problems that happen. Uh, this is going to be associated with MSH2 and MLH1. And basically what you have is you just have uh, increased about a thousand times in mutations, especially in the uh, short tandem repeats. Um, so that's what we have there. Now let's talk about uh, malignancies um, in the colon. You primarily we're talking about adenocarcinoma. Now um, pathogenesis, I mean there's two types of pathogenesis. Uh, the way I like to think about it is there's an FAP1 and an HNPCC1. Uh, again, with the FAP, there's going to be um, uh, you know, a mutation in APC and requires a two hit because if you have one working, that's enough to prevent it. So it's an APT, APC. And what does APC do? It inhibits beta catenin. And beta catenin is responsible for activating um, the MYC and cyclin D1. Uh, which obviously increases growth. So uh, if you're no longer inhibiting beta catenin, then that's going to increase cyclic D1 and you're going to increase growth. So that's the first hit. And then the second hit, it, it, it activates, uh, you get a mutation in KRAS. And then in the final hit, you get an activation in P53. And a good way to remember this is the mnemonic AK53. So these are the three step-by-step -step, uh, mutations that occur. Now in, in this in H and PCC you basically it's the same issue uh, mismatch repair and that leads to accumulation of uh, these problems. Now um, there are some known risk factors. There are some known risk factors for uh, colorectal cancer. This is decreased fiber. Uh, so patients who don't need that much fiber, they're very high carbs, high fat diets. Uh, tend to have these. Also patients who are not getting enough vitamin A, C, or E, which obviously are antioxidants. Uh, patients who are involved with tobacco in any way. Um, obviously uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, is associated. You know, Pretz Jaggers is associated. Um, familiar adenomatous polypropus and any type of villus adenoma. These are all risk factors uh, for developing uh, colon cancer. Um, clinically, um, what you'll tend to see is going to be um, uh, because they're losing so much blood, you tend to see iron deficiency anemia, uh, especially if it's in the ascending. Uh, if, if the cancer is in the ascending, you see iron deficiency anemia. Um, this is generally going to be an uh, exophytic mass and so of course if you have iron deficiency anemia they're probably going to be complaining of uh, lethargy and weakness. Uh, if it's in the descending colon you generally have colicky pain, uh, you, they, they have uh, blood in the stool and the mass is going to be more infiltrating uh, inward not going outwards. Um, and for diagnosis, 
Uh, one of the things is the iron deficiency because it's so common in elderly patient who comes with uh, iron deficiency elderly you have to rule out uh, colon cancer uh, also you have the apple core lesion on uh, x-ray and you can also use CEA as a tumor marker but this is not for screening it's much better for maintenance and seeing how the progression of the disease